Hello, it's me, Peter. Welcome to my channel, The Way What is True. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Now, today I thought it'd be a great idea to do a video about worry and anxiety because we all have problems, we're all unique. We're all born into different families. We all have different parents and so on and so forth, different brothers and sisters. Sometimes even if we ourselves personally don't have too many problems, we know people who do. We have friends, we have family, work colleagues, and it just goes on and on and on. And especially within the midst of this cost of living crisis now and, and everything that's go still going on with COVID and the war between Russia and Ukraine, it's just absolutely crazy in the world right now. So, yeah, I mean, in my own life, uh, you know, anyone who knows anything about me knows I've struggled the most with a lack of friendship, loneliness and depression and negative thoughts, feelings and emotions. I spend a lot of time on my own. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, now I've just got this article on my mobile phone. It's BibleStudyTools.com and it's an article about worry and anxiety. And it says worry and anxiety Bible verses. Now, there's quite a few of them, so I'm going to read through them as quickly as I can. Uh, yeah, so what can I say about worry and anxiety before I start reading from my mobile phone? Uh, let me think. Well, for one thing, Satan looks at your life like it's on a roll of film from the moment you're born to the day you die. And whatever you're weak, whatever failings you have, wherever you're vulnerable, it could be loneliness, financial problems, relationship problems, a lack of friends. Perhaps you've got the wrong kinds of friends. You know, you've got bad influences in your life, people around you who are corrupting you because of their bad behaviour. Uh, it could be anything. Sometimes people have... Uh, um, personality disorders, health problems, uh, all sorts. Sometimes people can suffer from depression for, for, for no explicable reason. It's just like um, hereditary, you know. There's all sorts that people are going through. I mean, uh, well, one of the best examples of, of uh, worry today is financial worry. We're in the middle of a cost of living crisis. It's affected over 140 countries around the world. So there's never been, uh, aside from our own personal problems, like the wrong kinds of relationships, too many relationships, not enough relationships. In my case, I only had one six-month relationship at the age of 34. Uh, that, that was my first relationship at the age of 34. And a, I'll describe it as a severe lack of friendship as well throughout my life. Anyway, so this video applies to me just as much as it applies to anyone who's watching this. Now, if you want me to pray about anything, tell me down below and I'll pray for you. I will intercede for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will pray about whatever problems, worries, concerns and anxieties you have. I'll pray for whoever you want me to pray for, whether it's you or somebody who you know. Now, yeah, uh, the devil does use our personal problems against us. And you best believe that our friends, our family in the world at large, they, obviously the closer somebody is to you, the more likely they are to worry about you and to pray for you and to, and to be aware of your problems personally. But... The world at large don't want to know. The vast majority of people, this, this applies to Christians all the way through to atheists, right? Most people don't want to know. They're, they're too busy thinking about themselves and what they're doing on, on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, God cares about you. He always will. And really, when you think about it, he's the one uh, person, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's the one person who will never let you down. He'll never abandon you. Other people will abandon you. Other people will let you down, but he never will. So cast all your cares upon him. Put all your problems at the cross. Think about it. So many of us Christians and unbelievers alike around the world are, are, are carrying around our problems like heavy bags or like a big heavy weight around our necks. So really, we should be taking it all off and putting it at the cross of Christ. Uh, anyway, let me read from this. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's Philippians 4, 6. Now, a lot of what I'm saying is easier said than done. It takes practice. It takes years and years and years. I'm 35 and a half, okay? And I still struggle to take my problems to God. Oftentimes I'm in the house, I'm, I'm uh, muttering to myself, occasionally uh, about my problems saying oh this isn't fair why, why, why aren't you doing something about this you know but yeah it's not that he doesn't know he knows but he allows bad things to happen to us to strengthen our character sometimes and yes it can seem overwhelming at times like we just can't cope anymore we've like reached the end of our rope you know 
Anyway, it says here, Bible verses about worry and anxiety. Find comfort and peace through scripture that promises you hope and a future. Fear, worry and anxiety are all weapons of Satan to keep us from experiencing the full life that God has for us. These emotions can overwhelm us and keep us paralysed. Learn how to leave... It says here, learn how to... I think it means live free, but it says leave free. I think that's a spelling. Yeah, it's, it, it's a grammatical error. Learn how to live free from worry and anxiety by meditating on the word and casting your cares upon Jesus. Start today and take small steps toward living fully free from anxieties. Now, anyone who's a true Christian realises that there isn't just the physical realm where we're living, the realm where we, that we can see, hear, taste, uh, uh, touch and smell. It, it, there's more to this world than just the five senses. There's the spirit realm, otherwise known as the second heaven. And that's where most spiritual warfare is happening in 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 in, conju in, in conjunction with the first heaven where we are now, this physical realm where we, where, li where we live. And um, it's a bit complicated, but there's a direct correlation with what, what's going off in our lives and what we allow the enemy to do in our lives and what we don't allow them to do. The closer we are to God, the harder it is for them to do anything. But Christians are more of a target than anybody else. Anyone who professes to believe in Jesus as their personal Lord and Saviour, they're the ones who get attacked the most. Now, when it comes to unbelievers, the number one tactic with agnostics, atheists, and people that don't know what to believe, they don't care or whatever, or they believe in a false god, uh, perhaps uh, they're, they're Muslims or Buddhists or Hindus or Sikhs or whatever, um, the, the, the number one tactic with unbelievers in general is to keep them distracted. Try and prevent them at all costs from accepting Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. That's the main tactic that the enemy uses. Anyway, it goes on to say here, a prayer to soothe an anxious and worried heart. So I might as well read this before I carry on any further. Dear Lord, I thank you that I can come to you always for any reason. I'm grateful that when I pray to you, you answer me. Help me to come to you at the beginning of my fears and anxieties instead of waiting until I can't stand them anymore. The quicker I come to you, the better. You want to free me from all my fears. Help me look to you for help more often so that I can be radiant with your joy. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. That's a very, very good prayer. Now, 1 John 4.18 there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love, says here. 1 Peter 3.14 But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. 2 Timothy 1.7 For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. Isaiah 35, 4. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 41.10 So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That's a very good one, actually, because none of us knows what's going to happen in the future. None of us knows when we're going to get in our next relationship, if ever. I mean, for all I know, I could be single for the next 10 or 15 years, or maybe it would just be for a few weeks. Maybe I've had my one and only relationship. I don't know. And it's the same with, with, with my own. I'm obviously talking about my own personal problems right now in my own life. Perhaps I'll, Perhaps my only friend, my real friend, will be God, and that's it. Apart from my small family. I only come from a small family. I spend most of my time on my own. So, yeah, this is, these are the sort of worries and problems and fears I have. It's all when the good people saying, oh, don't worry, you'll be fine. You'll be OK. No. <laughs> oh, believe me, I've got quite a bit to worry about. So this video applies to me just as much as it applies to anyone else. 
because a lack of friends and a lack of relationships is no joke. And unless you've been through it yourself, you've got no idea what it's like. Anyway, uh, uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. John 14.1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I would just like to say that it's not healthy to use God as a crutch. OK, a lot of people do that without even properly having a proper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very unhealthy. Uh, what we should be doing is relying on God as our friend, as our God and as our Lord and Saviour and taking all of our problems to him. We shouldn't try and hide anything from him. OK, but uh, using God as a crutch is no good because that's very, very negative. That is, it's like... It's like a negative way of having a relationship with God and sharing our problems with him. We shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't be walking around thinking, oh, oh, woe is me, Lord, help me, every single day. <laughs> you know, anyway, uh, Joshua 1, nine. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Again, that's Joshua 1, nine. Luke 12.22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, about your body, what you will wear. And although it's not uh, in this particular passage here, because it's shortened, but basically he goes on to talk about how, how unbelievers and, and, and people in general in the world, the, 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 the pagans, he describes them, go after food, they go after clothes. They go after this and that. In other words, they haven't got the priority straight. We should be looking to God first and everything else will follow. There is more to the body than the clothes. There's more to the body than food, you know. Uh, and then he made an example of the lilies of the field. They, they don't toil, labour and spin. And yet even King Solomon was not clothed as one of those lilies. That's one of the, example that he, that's one of the examples he, he used to try and put things in, in, into perspective. Uh, Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Exactly what I was saying earlier on. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. That's his way of saying don't be greedy or materialistic or focus on the superficial or the shallow. Yeah. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're a lot more important than any. In fact, we're more important than any of the animals he's created. A lot of animal activists uh, will tell you that, that we're not more important than the animals, but we are. We're made after God's image and likeness. That doesn't mean to say we can lord it over the animals and say, ho, 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 I'm made after God's image and likeness while you are. No, no, no. No, 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 no. We're, we're supposed to treat the animals with the utmost respect. And we're all a part of God's creation. All of God's creation has an order in terms of importance, in terms of status and all the rest of it. And we're supposed to be stewards of the earth. Anyway, not to go too far off topic, but yes, we are supposed to take care of this earth and the animals in it and everything. And yet it says here, are you not much more valuable than they? Much more valuable than the birds of the year. And then it says here, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. Again, like what I was saying earlier on. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, ye of little faith? It actually says you of little faith, but I'm so used to reading ye, so I said ye. <laughs> So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And when you think about it, take one hard look at the world around you. Everyone's taught, yeah, every, every time you switch on the TV, you see food commercials. Yeah, think about it. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? The world advertises those three things an awful, awful lot. For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. It's not like we don't need those things, it's just that sometimes we put too much emphasis and importance on them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. 
Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. There's no point in thinking, oh, well, what's, you know, woe is me, what's going to happen in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time? No point. Anyway, now we're on to Psalms 34, 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Psalms 34, 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Psalms 94, 19. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Psalms 1388. The Lord will vindicate me. Your Lord... Sorry, let me say that again. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's very, very true. Remember what I was talking about spiritual warfare, how there's a first heaven where we're living in a second heaven. And then, of course, there's the third heaven where God resides as well. So, yes, Christians in particular come under a lot of spiritual attack. But it's up to us how we deal with that. It's called life. It's a life. A lot of what happens uh, when it comes to, 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 to in, in our lives and what's going on in the spirit realm is spiritual warfare. But we don't even realise it because we're so used to it. We're so used to it. We're used to being depressed. We're used to complaining. We're used to our, our, our roots and our habits and everything. A lot of it is actually... Our, our, we're used to our ways of carrying on for better or worse and a lot of it is spiritual warfare we don't even know it we need to open our eyes to, to realize what's going on that doesn't mean to say that satan's hiding under every rock or hiding behind every wall or anything we, we, we've got to keep our heads screwed on straight but nonetheless we are in the midst of a, a spiritual battle we all are uh proverbs 3 5 to 6 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. Be, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought but, and never fails to bear fruit. Luke 1, 35 to 37. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her six month, for no word from God will ever fail. Now on to Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Luke 12, 24 to 34. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them, and how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow, they do not labour or spin. Yeah, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your hearts on what you eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things. Think about that one. And your father knows that you need them, but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you his kingdom, to give you the kingdom, sorry. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. 
Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. Again, that's, an, that's saying that our emphasis should not be on being greedy and just accumulating money for ourselves for the sake of it so we can live whatever lifestyle we want to live. Uh, you, you know, you know, even the richest, most successful people, they cannot take their money with them to the grave. They may say, well, it's all about legacy. It's all about what people say about me after I've passed away. But guess what? Those people are going to die as well. <laughs> our, our, our emphasis should be on God and God alone. Everything else is just temporary and passing away. And then it goes on to say this. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wherever someone's treasures are, if our treasures are in the world, then we have a worldly heart. If our treasures are with God through good deeds... And, and through trying to live a good life and by doing good to other people to the best of our ability, then our treasures will be in heaven waiting for us. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. But my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It certainly wasn't when he was on this earth for 33 years. <laughs> ah, dear. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Have you noticed here that it doesn't say he takes away our problems? It says you are with me. Your rod and your, your rod and your staff will comfort me. He doesn't take away all of our problems. He doesn't wave a magic wand and say, oh, Peter, you're lonely and depressed today like you have been for the past, what, ever since my late teens, early 20s. <laughs> He's not going to say, oh, I'm going to take it all away from you. I'm going to find you a beautiful girlfriend who loves you and, and, and wants to take care of you and is ideally suited for you. Don't worry about it. He doesn't work like that. Who knows? I might find someone in the future. Again, I'm referring to my own personal problems, and I encourage everyone who's watching this video to talk about their problems down below and to share your own personal life experiences with me so I can pray for you. But yeah, he doesn't work like that. He doesn't work like that. He just doesn't. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now we're on to John fourteen twenty seven. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Colossians three fifteen. Let the peace of, of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. By being thankful to God for what we do have, never mind focusing on our problems, whether it's financial problems, loneliness, depression, health problems, we should always be thankful for what we have to be thankful for. I realise that some people are in situations and have problems that aren't their fault, life's unfair, bad things happen to good people. I get it, okay? But nonetheless, most people have at least some things to be thankful for still, you know, and that goes a long way with God. That goes a long way being thankful to him. Uh, I often thank God for my clothes, for the roof over my head, the food I have to eat, the fact that I'm not on the streets. I'm in good physical health. Uh, you, you know, I've got a lot to be thankful for, but I've also got a lot of problems too. So it's like a double edged sword kind of thing. Anyway, now we're on to 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. Psalms 55.22. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Proverbs 12.25. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. 1 Peter 5, 6, 8. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert 
and of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And that's a very, very good description of him. He's hungry. He knows he's only got so much time left. Um, God's not going to let him carry on like this forever. You know, things are happening. These are the end days now. About 85% of Bible prophecy has been fulfilled. So there's roughly 15% of Bible prophecy to go. And that's what the enemy's doing. We need to be sober-minded. And uh, he is out to destroy people, and he does destroy people. He's destroyed billions and billions of people over, over, over many, many millennia, you know. Uh, this is a war. It's a war for souls. And he uses worry and, and anxiety as a tool to drag people down. Now, Psalms 23, 4 Again, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hebrews 13, 5, 6. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? That's very, very true. To be honest with you, if I was put in a boxing ring, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but it kind of made me think about that. If I was put in the boxing ring with the world's best boxer, yeah, I know that I'll probably end up in hospital and so on and so forth. But ultimately, I'd be standing opposite a mortal, a human being with a heart, with blood running through his veins. Uh, I'm, I'm not the rough and I'm not a rough and ready character, as you can probably tell. I'm no coward. Uh, but yes, um, we should not be afraid of mortals. We should, that doesn't mean say we should be arrogant and pompous and think, oh, it's just a boxer. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see, we shouldn't live in fear of people. You see, our personality, our hearts and minds, the personality of a person and the character of a person go a long, long way. Uh, yeah. So we shouldn't be afraid of people. We should be afraid of God. That doesn't mean say we should be idiots and think, oh, I'm not afraid of you, Tyson Fiore or Deontay Wilder or whoever it may be. Uh, uh, what's his name? Mike Tyson. Yes, Mike Tyson. <laughs> years and years of muscle memory and reflex make for a dangerous person. But yes, um, we shouldn't be frightened of anyone. Now, Psalms 56.3. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Yeah. So that's the end of the video. I hope and pray that you've watched it all the way through to the end. I had a feeling that this video would be fairly lengthy. I probably could have done the same bit in half the time, but I like to add my own input. So I thank you so, so much for watching it all the way through if you have. Again, remember to like, subscribe and comment down below. And I thought this video would be especially pertinent now because of the financial crisis worldwide. And it's just a reminder for, for myself and for everybody else to put our problems at the cross. Like I said at the start of the video, my main issue has been a lack of friends, uh, a lack of a social life, and the vast majority of my life, of course, I've been single, you know. So yeah, uh, pray for me and my problems, and I'll pray for you, and I hope and pray that you leave a comment down below, and uh, take care, I'll see you on the next one, and bye-bye.